Carol walks through Liverpool Street Station with its intergalactic glass and steel ceiling propped up by towering Corinthian columns. She's headed for the escalators and the soaring windows that let in a holy glow of morning light. She passes underneath the timetable board listing departures and arrivals, articulated through the medium of glowing alphanumeric text, flipping and updating as announcements below from the clustered boom boxes informing passengers about platform numbers, itemising all stations en routes to final destinations. Where this train will end, and the numerous delays due to vandalism on the tracks, or leaves on the line, or sun on the line, or a body under a train. How very inconsiderate, not to her, to choose to throw yourself in front of a mechanical iron beast weighing thousands of tons, racing at a top speed of 140 miles per hour, to choose such a brutal and dramatic finale. Carol knows what drives people to such despair, knows what it's like to appear normal but feeling herself swaying just one leap away from... the amassed crowds on the platforms who carry enough hope in their hearts to stay alive, swaying, just one leap away from... eternal peace. These days, however, she feels very much alive, very much looking forward, as they say at work, to the next window of opportunity. These days she's a willing orchestral player in the cacophony of London's busiest station, with a footfall of nearly 150 million pairs of living feet every year. The anonymous convergence of commuters who are 99.9% genetically identical, regardless of their visual packaging, regardless of their psychological wiring, warped, tangled, shorted, electrocuted. All of them so perfectly composed, so poised and in control socialised to be out in public as reasonable members of society this Monday morning where all dramas are interiorised. Look at her, in her perfectly tailored city clothes, the balletic slope of her shoulders, straightened hair scraped back into a martial topknot, eyebrows plucked with calligraphic flair, her discreet no-nonsense jewellery of platinum and pearls. Carol, whose daily lexicon revolves around the orbit of equities, futures and financial modelling, who loves to immerse herself in a universe where fiscal cells split off to create gazillions of replicas of themselves, spinning off into beautiful infinity. The glittering stars of wealth that make the world go round. Her idea of bedtime reading is to scrutinise the profitability of businesses and oversee investment plans for the commodities of the African and Asian markets. The darkness of night pouring into her study through its old-fashioned sash window her face bathed in the blue light of a hypnotically addictive 24-inch iMac. The computer screen where she alone, it seems, ignores the parallel universe of social media and what she considers its time-suck temptations. At least her addiction to the electronic motherboard is productive. She tries to convince herself, clicking on the never-ending monetary websites of cyberspace that pop up, Nasdaq, Wall Street Journal, London Stock Exchange while also monitoring the international news that affects market conditions, the weather conditions that affects crops, the terrorism that destabilises countries, the elections that will affect trading agreements, the natural disasters that can wipe out whole industries, agricultures and communities. If it isn't work-related, it's not worth reading. 